Welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Hey, real quickly, I know uh, some of us may still be in our cooling season and uh, either on our preventative maintenance checks or we may even get some service calls, a no heat call, um, and we have to go to a unit and figure out what's going on. Well, sometimes one of the things that we might have to check is our hot surface igniter. Well, I'm showing you where the plug is on this particular unit um, because the hot surface igniter is actually back um, in the back there. It's, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's located inside there. It's gonna be on this side um, of the burners right after the gas valve as we come through that manifold there. You'll, that hot surface igniter will glow um, as we're going through the sequence of operations when we get to that step. And then once the gas valve opens, um, that's, that helps us uh, ignite our flame there. But sometimes we have to check those um, and figure out uh, where their resistance is and where the tolerance is so that we can have a conversation about to the homeowner about the integrity of their hot surface igniter. It's not a product that we clean or handle. Uh, we're just gonna take an ohm reading on there and then that ohm reading is gonna give us some information about that particular igniter. One of the things that you have to keep in mind is that there are a couple different types. Um, silicone carbide and silicone nitride are the two different types that we have. And so be sure that you understand and you know which one you have in your system. Reason being is the resistance or the ohm tolerances um, from the manufacturer which states that it's in a, 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 a safe ohm range or not are gonna differ between the two, okay? So the very first thing, uh, we have our meter. We're gonna set our meter to ohms. Uh, make sure that your system is de-energized, that it's not, not on. If you, can, if you can happen to get to the hot surface igniter and the furnace has not been running, you can check it cold, that's going to give you the most accurate reading. But we know that on the maintenance calls, you know, um, someone may have used it, you know, the, you know, earlier that day and we're just, we're just running a maintenance and so the system may still be operational um, at that time and so it may have been, been used or or you may be coming in on an off cycle or something like that. But nonetheless, if you can get it, you know, when it's cold and hasn't been in use, that's gonna give you the most accurate reading. Then all we simply do is we unplug our hot surface igniter here. I'm gonna switch sides and we'll be able to go look at our meter over there. Um, and I'm gonna insert my leads into the, the holes there and then I'm gonna get an ohm reading. And this one is reading at 47, uh, 47 ohms. Now. What do you do with that information? Uh, make one, <coughs> plug it back up. Well, now we take that information and most of the manufacturers will give you some type of data sheet that says, or some type of sheet that gives you the ranges in which they say that that igniter is good. Um, for example, this one, it may say that between 30 and 50 ohms, we consider that good. Some of them may say between 13 and 19 ohms, we consider that good. And you can have some way, you know, really, really high between 150 to 200 ohms would be considered good. But definitely um, check with documented information to figure out what the range that that particular igniter that you have in your system needs to be at when you check it. Once you do that, you take that information and if it's in the good range, then you tell the homeowner that, hey, your igniter tested at 47 ohms and according to the manufacturer, that's good. Um, no, no need to worry there. Or it could still light, but it could have, it could be outside of that, right? And so if that range is outside of what the manufacturer says is good, then we need to warn our homeowner that at any, di at, at any time now that this particular igniter could fail uh, and not work, thus causing a problem for us. And that's you know, a little bit about what preventive maintenance is for, right? To, to prevent issues from happening down the road. And so as a part of our check, when checking our hot surface igniter, those are just a few of the things that you need to do uh, to make sure that you can have some information to talk to your homeowner about um, when, when checking your hot surface igniter. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good day. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Um, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you, and we'll see you next time.